Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's C3 Esports League. Thank you guys so much for joining me. My name's Mac Dewey. Joining me for the First Look podcast. You know him. You love him. He's back from Worlds, back from the vacay. He's dripping in the swag. Big Nate dog. Welcome back from Texas. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Major Man. W here, you know, I had a great time over in Worlds. You know, it, was, it, was, it was a fun time, it was a fun time, but we'll get to that in just a second. Nuts is with me as well. Appreciate you uh, hopping on once again. Back focus. to back to back weeks. Yeah, I'm sure. still focused on you. Don't worry, man. The camera may get out of focus. <laughs> but I'm here with you, dog. I'm feeling like crazy Nate last dog. week. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, there we go. We're back in focus. Now Nate's oh, in focus. Back. Huge. Oh, we love <laughs> that's what we like to see that's what we call a logitech webcam right there yes sir <laughs> so for we're starting off week two uh with first look so before we kind of transition into the week two action just wanted to for our first topic on the pre-show tonight wanted to reflect on week one a little bit as well as reflect on your weekend experience nape but before we hop into Rocket League Worlds. Let's talk a little bit about week one. Uh, for our streamed matches, we had, um, sorry, Nate, UNCW getting taken down by Clemson. The clean <laughs> sweep was kind of crazy. And you know, then UNC, U, USC, South Carolina dominated Duke during our second match. Yeah, you see. <laughs> so I'll just read chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, nonetheless, you know, UNCW, we didn't pull through as a, as a, as a coach, former player, it was painful. It was painful to see, uh, yeah. my boys not take anything they learned and put it into effect. But, you know, we, we've come back, we're stronger now mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to seeing <laughs> us, uh, into this next one tonight, actually against Wake Tech, but USC versus Duke was the bigger upsetting game i was, was it? Duke to, i was expecting duke to put more of a, a fight up although uh -huh. i think it was more or less due to the fact that i got confused on rl trackers and thought they had an ssl on their team when in fact they do not have that so now knowing that information right <laughs> it's more understandable that usc kind of did that but now and, i was, uh, Good. Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was the tea for the streamed matches. Nuts, you were helping us out with clips and stuff like that. Were there any surprises for you on the stream as well? Uh, I obviously didn't get to watch the Clemson, yeah, Clemson UNCW, UNCW game because I had I had a game, but from what I saw, like of the clips that Cloudy and uh, Tiff got, there were some pretty good plays. I know Reticle mm -hmm. had one of the better saves in that whole series. Tiffany showed me the clip, and I was just kind of like in awe. I didn't think he was going to get the save. <laughs> and then he, like, he got the one, and then he was uh, airling up to get it a second. He got past that first man. I thought mm -hmm. that was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, USC, I kind of expected. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're just a powerhouse. They're, they're just, uh, isn't much surprise there. They're going to, them and UNCC are just going to kind of run this league for a while, is what it's looking like. <laughs> but, <laughs> Maybe there's a chance for upsets. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. Were they looking at the other off-stream matches for week number one? Uh, were there any other surprises for you guys? Thinking about the other matches, I think UNC Charlotte took care of business. Not too oh, shabby. Oh, ECU getting 3-1 by Wake Tech. <laughs> okay, buddy. That's, that's a conversation okay. right at there. Least, at least we didn't get 3 out on stream. That's all yeah, I'm Yeah, but, but, but we say. lost to Clemson. Y'all were favored to beat Wake Tech by a lot. Hey, like, maybe what? maybe Blurry's replacement on Wake Tech like did numbers for them. I don't know. No diss to Blurry. I love the guy. I met him at Land. Great guy. I mean, but, on may, some insider information here, I'm not gonna say who, but you know, a certain somebody said it was actually kind of easy to beat y'all. All right, I buddy. Mean, <laughs> it's okay. We'll see when ECU and UNCW plays. I feel like that game should get a uh, on stream. I feel like um, I think somebody should just get sick and like a team can't make stream, so you can replace our game. Yeah, I think that would be oh, a great yeah, stream yeah. game right there. That'd be a great stream game. Even said I always got in the bag. We, we're gonna work slug up the GC three by the in four weeks. Don't worry. 
You feeling okay? <laughs> I'm always feeling. I'm feeling amazing. You know. Hey, 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 hey. You just gotta take pop, pop an Addy, and you're good, brother. Love and it. Addy's insane. Driptane, is that what you be doing in your games? Is that what I'm hearing? Is Quite that... the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but oh gosh, that's too funny. Well, that I feel like for week one kind of hits a lot of the big notes. Uh, thinking about Nate, your little vacation to Rocket League Worlds, man. How would uh, how did uh, Texas treat you on the? Uh, well, no, I don't. I think we did pretty good uh, for the most part about not pinging you a whole bunch. Um, but false, overall, false statement. <laughs> I got pinged by so many people over this weekend, dude. And I want you to know, I didn't respond to a single one of you if I felt like I did not have to. Uh, I, I, I saw say. it and just didn't respond. <laughs> Like, but there I were was... times there were times we were talking in one of the chats and then you just come out of nowhere and you were like, I'm not answering anybody all weekend long. And then we just see you text in the chat. We're like, what is he doing? Yeah. Like, Go enjoy <laughs> your yeah. vacation. I think there was a point in time y'all literally told me to stop talking. Yeah, we all told you to leave us alone because <laughs> you said you were going to like not reply. <laughs> so you're like, all right. I mean, overall, the trip was a lot of fun. The trip was fun. Yeah. It was uh, definitely hot. I think it was like 95 plus every single day. Mm -hmm. But luckily, they were, they were. That's absurd. They were. It was like an eight-hour tournament in an air-conditioned place, which is nice. Okay, huge. But um, nonetheless, it, it was fun. You know, it stinks mm -hmm. that my team G two choked in Worlds <laughs> again. Grand Finals gets loses to BDS for the second time in Dallas. Oh, so brutal. But I mean, it, it was a fun experience. I met a lot of casters. I met a lot of panelists. I got oh, nice. some signatures. I used my spare, uh, oh, I'm getting hung up on stuff. <clears throat> what am I hung up on? It's crazy. So all I'm hearing is <laughs> Nate didn't, shambles. Nate didn't fulfill my request, which I'm kind of sad about. <laughs> but no, I actually got quite a few. I know, um, I used my spare UCW jersey and got a bunch of signatures on it. I don't know if y'all can see it. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Um, got a bunch of them. I tried to fill it up as much as I could, but. I don't know. I got four UNCW jerseys, so I might as well put one to good use. Put it up in the shadow <laughs> box. But no, it was, it was a fun experience. It was fun. I'm definitely gonna try and go again, even if it is in Europe. Oh, yeah, I'm being like told that. I'm in, I'm insane at Top Golf because apparently I, I I'm gonna be real. Put hand. I think I cooked y'all in Top Golf. It was kind of <laughs> over. Uh, <laughs> Did you do I, the uh, the mini games? Like oh the, yeah, uh, so they they did a lot of uh like just long drive. the card one oh long drive nice yeah classic or they were doing like points ones and I think I stepped up and just cranked one down the entire thing same uh, bros running them for their money yeah no I should have done a dollar a hole dollar oh eight. yeah <laughs> make up for the swear jar you know I get that for sure yeah, honestly uh, yeah I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm surprised I'm surprised I've made it this far. <laughs> Well, yeah. I think that is a uh, a solid reflection for week number one. Headed into our next topic for the pre-show. Talking about biggest surprises from week one and maybe potential surprises for week number two. And we also got a surprise for the stream. Special panelist guest. You know him, you love him. He can't, he's, he may be retired, but he still just keeps coming back. Our main guy, Coolio Plutio, welcome to the the pre-show as well. I I was hearing production might not be able to get your beautiful face on stream, but we should be able to hear you all right. <laughs> That's fine. I just want to say one thing and one thing only, Nate. People Mute this man in Video Ninja! Mute this man in oh, Video I, Ninja! I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, people in the back, people in the back. Dude. Niner Esports was at land and they held up a flag. Where were you? Where were you? Why weren't you behind the street? You know, Be behind I, the panel. You know what I was you know what I was gonna say to that? I sat next to your boy Blurry, all right? I was chilling with him, all right? That's what it was. I was chilling with him oh, and the Wake okay, Tech boys. Okay, <laughs> but hey, I did get okay. on stream. I did get on stream with the uh the what a save. I got the I got the what a save on there. Don't worry. I'm somewhere. <laughs> I'm somewhere. I'm trying to find Oh, I it probably right. saw you way back there, you know, like Rove. 80, row 90, way in the back, That's man. insane. Niner Esports was in row number one, baby. We're in row number one, just like we're going to be in number one in this league. That's all I'm going to say. That's crazy. 
crazy you, dumb. You got to show some initiative. No wonder UNCW lost. You got to show initiative, bro. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, quick shots. That's crazy. All right. Don't make you pull up the clip again. Dude, we're, we were past that. That's last year. Doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't count anymore. Bro's also, I, I also want to add Atomic Choked. Poor guy. That's he's never gonna live that down. He's gonna be there is a video, a video showing he hit the ball and he got a ghost touch. Dude, that's the what box, I was saying. The hitbox never... did go off and then it like pushed dude, him to the side. Dude. Yeah, but he had the whole world on his shoulders and <laughs> good God. He's gonna but... get grilled. It's okay. G two can't come through when they need it most. Amen. Hey, Owen. Neither can world. SSG. Top eight. Owen, here we are. Owen three in worlds. That's G two right there. <laughs> any any other org that roster would have won. It's that G two curse. That's what it is. <laughs> so so you're saying Rizzo and Cronovi would have won? Uh yeah. That's kind of insane. <laughs> Maybe back when uh, people barely knew how to aerial. Oh lord. <laughs> but back to uh, surprises. You know, Surprises, I, already said it once. Yeah. <laughs> I already said it once, but I definitely think, you know, ECU losing to Wick Tech was a big surprise. Um, Another big surprise, I would say, let's see. I'm, I'm surprised Lander didn't absolutely blow out NC State. That's what I'm surprised about. I'm surprised I didn't blow them out. It was actually a relatively close one that I saw, at least if I'm remembering correctly. But... Well, I mean, yeah. well, well, that's a that's a bit of a stretch. If you look at the shot differential, yeah, <laughs> dude, <laughs> State insane. had thirty one shots, and into or I mean, uh, Lander had thirty one shots. State had what? I did not see that stat, brother. <laughs> oh my god! State had what? Was that sixteen twenty saves? Yeah, twenty saves. Explains why. <laughs> explains why Ventus got that. Defensive that player of the week. <laughs> yeah, he was he was locked in on defense. That's Neuer. That's Neuer. He's playing now. That's wild. He's trying. But no, I think uh, overall, I'd say that's the that was the biggest one for me. Was I, yeah, they may have had thirty one shots. All right, I mean, they may have had, but they should have scored more. <laughs> realistically, <laughs> yeah, that's good. they got that UNC Charlotte shooting. That's what we. Hey, that's what we like to see. That's what we like to see. I think oh, a big a big upset this week really was Pembroke beating a bye team. Like, oh, how, don't start this. How? Game. How? Don't start. They this won game, that. Bro. Here we go with the bye week. The BYE. <laughs> BYE. I swear they were undefeated last season. No, they were like weren't one and oh no. No, they were they were zero and zero and nine. He's trying so nah, hard. I'm not. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> but, He's reaching. He's definitely reaching. Lord, I mean, BYE just needs to step it up. But you know, it's all right. It's Lock all right. in. Oh, cool, you yeah. know, this week's this week's a new week. No, it's true. Who is on by this week? Uh, maybe? Charlotte. Oh, maybe maybe they'll beat Charlotte this week. <laughs> It, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> That's crazy. No, uh, now, you hear that? My man no said you lose to BYE. That's crazy. <laughs> I would also like to add UNC Charlotte against Elon. We mm -hmm. had 30 shots. And they had a total of 19 saves. <laughs> Y'all only scored five times off 30 shots? It's kind of insane. No, we, no we, scored, uh, we scored 12 times. But oh, Nick, well, I read the wrong stat. We had That's Knight, on me. Dead Devil, and Lazy on the roster. And they had... No, Dead Devil and Knight had 24 shots combined. 24 shots. I mean, don't get me wrong. Knight had eight goals, but Dead Devil had three. Because we had to sub in Dead Devil because Bala was... I don't know, doing Bala things. <laughs> Knight's coming at you in jet. He said mean? bench player talking too much, bringing on his teammates' crazy. downfall. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, bro. It's nah, he's not a bench player. He's a retired player. Get it right. Hey, yeah. I'm just here for the uh, I'm here for the ride. So I'm still getting funny. free tickets to land. Mm -hmm. um, it's insane. I, I mean, am I wrong, though? Am I wrong? 24 shots. I ain't going to cut it. I ain't going to cut it. Yeah. But what, what, do you, what do you want out of them? Let's shoot the let's, ball. 
on net instead of like <laughs> bar down or right into a defender. So you you're wanting a hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent shooting. I mean, not oh, came close, but <laughs> oh, just that insane. easy, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. Let let's see you do that. Retire, man. <laughs> <laughs> can't maybe do can't do maybe much. we could have a show match at Lan again. A show but... match, old heads versus new blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new guys would get slapped. I... <laughs> easy, easy. Nah, you got to have the draft again. Let's see. Who but you can't have ECU all on the same team for the show match. That was. Let's see if USC like matched it. Dude, USC, they had forty-five they shots. <laughs> 45 shots. They were shooting. Well, I mean... Og did, I you, believe, you saw, get you saw player the... of the week. Oh, uh, no, yeah. he got, a, he got no. MVP of the week. Yeah, most valuable player. Well, no, Ooh, and on the uh, Twitter poll, right? No, Darth Pepe oh, should have had... Dude. I think the poll it? ended on Darth Pepe. Oh, my gosh. Dude. We got, did we get that wrong in the, in the sheet? No, yeah, his, his MVP is based off of his stats. Uh, Statistically, okay, okay, MVP. okay, okay. Dude, makes these sense. Stats. Oh my god, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen forty-five Whoa. shots in a three-zero series. You're I, right. I, it was that, might, that might be the first time ever. But, I mean, well, yeah. Talking about talking about some individual performances here, Coolio's taking a. A, a solid look at our uh, stats behind the scenes. Uh, taking a look at, you know, some of the numbers definitely stand out. We see Og, I think, had the best uh, shots per game average uh, across the clean sweep over Duke. Um, so, yeah, top players of, from week one. We had on Twitter, our poll was for Darth Pepe, Og, and Knight from UNC Charlotte. Uh, Knight actually got more votes than than Og. Uh, Number one. <laughs> so Coolio, maybe you had the Niners squad flooding the the Twitter poll a little bit for some uh, support there. <laughs> I feel like Clemson kind of told their whole esports league to go vote for uh, Pepe because <laughs> he he got a lot of votes and I wasn't sure what was going on there. <laughs> I thought it would definitely have been Og that won it, but. I guess, what do I know? The stats, though, statistically. Statistically, yeah, but... The I mean, eyes of the community. Um, hey, does it pass also, the eye test, you know? <laughs> we also got the most uh, offensive player of the week was Cats, according to uh, the stat sheet here. Coming in with uh, an average of two shots, 0. 0.3 saves, 0. 0.7 assists, Oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong guy. Yeah, I mean, do you, uh, <laughs> y'all know for like uh, fantasy football, you know PFF? Can we do like C three FF? <laughs> oh, C three fantasy football. Okay. C three oh. RL focus. All right, Cats <laughs> with averaging five shots, one save, one assist, and two and a half goals across the board for his three games. I feel like. Is well deserved, you know. He's he is the highest. The only person he was under for shots, I believe, was Og. Og, yeah, yeah, with his uh 7.3. I was gonna say, but when you're taking 22 shots, yeah, <laughs> are, you sure, are, are you sure they want own goals? I'm, I mean, most own goals at land, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. You're telling Nate not to do on the past earlier. Now look what you're doing. Hey, cats! If you're in the chat, man, got it. Wait, he's not. Never mind. All right, just Never. keep going. Keep <laughs> going. I can see it. <laughs> then we got defensive player of the week was Ventus. Where's Ventus at in here? Ventus averaging he's the NC State guy, right? Yeah, he's averaging mm -hmm. three point seven saves across Off of how many week. shots? Okay. Well, let's, let's go back over to that high. It was where is it at? Lander Lander got off. Uh... Yeah, out, out of the the thirty one <laughs> shots attempts, he saved eleven of. <laughs> Someone's uh, got to Nate, right? Someone's got I to. Mean, <laughs> I don't think it matters how many saves you get if you can't put one in the net. <laughs> hey, he was stat padding for sure. Dude, honestly, <laughs> right? From, yeah, just, yeah, let him shoot. Let him shoot. I'll, I'll get those saves, guys. Don't worry. NC State roster. NC State roster 
<laughs> Looking at it, it looks like Ventus was the only one able to somewhat keep up here. With the, he had the 11 saves, two goals, and three shots versus, oh my god. Assist, four saves, one shot. Five saves, one shot. Mm. Dude, I'm just looking at Lander. Papa and Slimy had 25 of their 31 shots. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's it's actually same. crazy. But in work for sure. Yeah. Honestly, Any... I would say I would say from what stats I'm seeing right now, out of the teams that have played, let's see, we got UNC Try played Elon. Yeah. That was that was free for them. USC played Duke, which was free. I feel like what? NC State was just... the only like somewhat mm -hmm. capable team against like the, our top three. So right now, I think I would say Lander is probably looking the strongest out of them with how much they're like, like that, that shot percentage is wild. Yeah, for sure. And... And... Next week, like or this week. Good, good question, Coolio. And actually, uh, you know, great, great minds, I think, connect in here a little bit. Our next topic is best matchups for week number two. I'll read them off. We got USC versus Elon, Lander Jeez. versus Pembroke, <laughs> Clemson versus Pretty. NC State, Wake Pretty. Tech versus UNCW, <laughs> and ECU versus Duke. Free. Freeze insane. <laughs> Elon, Elon, we gotta talk. Well, I'm so sorry. I, I want to apologize for Nate here. He said sorry. I want to <laughs> apologize for Nate here. You are playing the two, like, e easily top two play or teams in this league. Hey, at least back you're done back. early in the season. <laughs> early in the season, you're done. I mean, you're getting it out of the way early, I guess, but... I mean, that pain is still going to be there. It's going to resonate at the end of the season. Let me pull up the schedule here. Do they play Lander at all? <laughs> Next they week. They play him week three. <laughs> oh, that's insane, bro. How did no. this happen? Do no, they no. really? Back to back to back? I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. Oh, oh I was going to say, that's disgusting if they play. I will three. confirm. <laughs> I'm looking well, now, right. Lander has a bye. Next week. I don't week, think Lander so plays Elon. Elon plays ECU. All I'm going to say is uh, UTW lucks out on not having to play Lander. <laughs> we do not I wonder how Lander. that works. No, you, you, well, you play uh, Actually, actually, <laughs> believe it or not, we try. We, we looked at the seating and we genuinely were trying to find a way to make Pembroke and Elon not have to play. All the <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't figure it out. So that's just kind of how the schedule turned out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, but... Hey. That, hey, Nate, I'll, I'll pay pal you. That's what I want. <laughs> Brother, PayPal I don't know. Crazy. I'm pretty sure. Do you not I'm sure you play Lander? Oh, yeah. We, I think we do. I think you play USC week, next week and, and Lander. And, yeah, we play Lander uh, October 1st. Okay. So good matchups is what I'm hearing. Good matchups indeed. We get back to back good matchups. Ooh. But anyway, back, back to the topic <laughs> of today's matchup. <laughs> Y'all looking ahead too much. Um,. Exciting season. Will UNCW get redemption no. this week? I want to have Wake faith Tech? in my boys, but with the fact that they beat ECU and we struggle with ECU a lot, I feel like we might be a little outpaced here. Yeah. But I'm going to have faith in their abilities because I think they... If they can... Because I've seen them play. I, I've seen them, and when they're on, they're on. All right? Yeah. Like, we, we played Northeastern, and we took them to Game 5. All right? Mm-hmm. And they're, mm -hmm. a, they're a practically a GC3 SSL roster. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we're playing well games. and we're playing, like, cohesively, I think we have a good chance. But yeah. as soon as one person on our team starts lacking, I think it's going to be really bad for us. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say UNCW because I'm going to have faith in them. But <laughs> who's got to uh, who's got <laughs> step up, Nate? Honestly, I think the biggest key piece for UNCW is going to be... Um, I think it'll be Slug having to try and match the pace because he is the new. He's the, he's the rookie. This is his mm -hmm. first time playing competitive Rocky League, so I think he, it's gonna be he has to match the pace here. Yeah. But if he does, I've seen him do it, and I think we have it in the bag. Cool. Clemson was not a good show out of what we can do. All right, it was not allegedly. A allegedly, it was not. Oh I mean, wow! Saw, we have you this. Uh... Coolio Plutio in the chat subscribed with Prime. 
So did overload Dado or Dado. Appreciate it, guys. Does uh, can confirm it goes directly into Nate's pocket? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I just want to say, I mean, you can have faith in your team, but I have faith in yeah. the Panthers, and look how that's going. <laughs> yeah, 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 Bryce Young cool. getting benched. Let's go. Literally. Big up the Panthers. Oh, guys, nobody needs to see me cry on stream. Let's stay focused on the C3. <laughs> <laughs> Coolio Nuts, are you guys looking forward to any of these Week 2 matches? Um, Duke and ECU. I'm always looking forward to ECU games. But yeah. I think That's I think UNCW good. and uh, Wake Tech is going to be a good one, too. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, State and Clemson, too. I was thinking about that one as well, Coolio. It's going to be those three matches, I feel like. Because Lander and Pembroke, Lander wins that. USC mm -hmm. and Elon, God help you. I mean, <laughs> USC. And then UNC Charlotte versus Bay. I mean, that'll be a tight one. It'll but be close. Like we'll come up. We'll come out on top. I feel like. Yeah. So who do you guys think week two is most important for? I mean, Charlotte against BYE is going to be a close one. I think that one's important for them. I think it's but... most important for UCW. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I Wilmington. That one's going to be a nail biter. Like, if you lose this, I don't think you're going to get, like, a more even matchup this season. Yeah. I was thinking Wilmington is probably this is the most important. That mm -hmm. one or I would say between NC State and Clemson. Okay. Yeah, that one. Yeah, NC State. Well, NC State. If they win against Clemson, I feel like they just win against every other team. I feel like, like you if, think so. Yeah, they play. I, Wake, I don't know. They play Wake Tech, Duke, Elon, May? and USC. Well, they play USC, but like, who is USC? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. That's Who's even on their team? Why are they? I mean, who like, let them? The, if we're talking like end of the season standings, it's probably yeah. Wake Tech and UNC Wilmington. Okay. This is like the most even matchup y'all are going to get. Mm. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just all luck based at that point because you either play like Elon or Pembroke, some free ones, and then you get like USC at the end of the season. Which I, don't I feel know. like Coolio is trying to have beef with every school, just calling oh, them yeah. free yeah, and I'm terrible. Just, just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sitting there swinging These aren't them. Harris Teeter cookies, guys. There's. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All I know is uh, UNCC is in for a rough one at the end of the season. They don't know what's coming. Uh, uh, <laughs> God, they don't know what's coming their way. Oh, that's I, really it's not, it's not going to be as fun without Coolio on the team. Dude, I'm going <laughs> to tell them, as Palpatine said, execute order 66. We are dropping at least 40 shots on y'all. <laughs> insane. We are going ham. We I are like dropping everything. We're gonna get that clipped, and um, if that doesn't happen, something's got to be done. I think that's like another fifty dollars to the swear jar just for his lying. <laughs> well, I mean, did you? I I definitely I have the Twitch open. I did a little. I I dabble yeah. in the clippy clip. We're gonna we're gonna keep Coolio and see well, if gonna, he keeps his word. Forty. I, say, I am going to cater. Whatever that taco place was, because I love those tacos. I don't know what they were, but I am going to cater them. Islands? That's what we'll do. Yeah, we'll do islands. We're going to get fed well over in land this year. <laughs> you know, I no tried to have them sponsor us with food, and they told me no. Maybe they can get, maybe Mr. Presidential Rocket League can uh, hey, get hey, a hey, good hey, word hey. in. No, Presidential <laughs> Rocket League doesn't exist here. <laughs> Why not? Why not, dude? <laughs> because I'm not physically sponsored. I got to be sponsored. Or I got to uh... sponsor. It's backwards. <laughs> so you need to sponsor me, correct? I mean, he kind of does. <laughs> when I win a million dollars when the Panthers win the Super Bowl. In the next 40 years? I'll give you a cut. <laughs> like, when are you expecting the Panthers to ever win? Well, I don't think I'll be alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be gone, man. I'll be, my, uh, I'll be, Julio. I'll be in my coffin, just gone, man. Coolio, my dad had the Maple Leafs as his trial, and the Panthers are now mine. And we continually, generation to generation, pass on the torch to a team that's just just never going to finish the job. Literally, that's what we expect. But, you know, can't do nothing about it. Just got to accept it and enjoy our tacos at land. Let's go. Oh, goodness. Flip well, it. He I said he's going to uh... cater. Flip it. <laughs> yeah, gotta get another clip. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. Uh, so we talked about week one, reflected on that, and Nate's vacation. 
and talked a little bit about the week two preview. I had this last topic as a little extra slash uh, miscellaneous topic for you guys. Is uh, what do you guys? Is there any other uh, topics we want to hit before we get geared up and ready to go for the week two stream? I'm very annoyed that CRL decided to have their stuff the same weekend <laughs> as my land, dude. That is dude, so dude, annoying. They had, the same, they had it the same time as DreamHack too. That's crazy. The first week is DreamHack, and I'm pretty sure the like third week or last week is y'all's tournament. Although at this point, man, I'm not even gonna be real. It's practically RLCS 2.0. It's not even like CRL yeah. anymore. Oh, yeah. Top top merging both conferences and making it top A only qualify. As practically pro teams at that point. <laughs> like, come yeah. on. But you know, Epic. this was Epic. UNCW's year, man. This was our. <laughs> you know just what? Just this close. Just this close, Nate. <laughs> you know what? It's worth it. <laughs> Yeah, epic shit in the bag once again. Oh, oh go! Add it, add it to the jar. Add it. Add it. Add it. I'm happy to add it. I'm happy to add it. I'm so happy to add it, dude. Was I bound have... to happen. Epic That's has ruined great. Rocket League, and they've ruined CRL. Now it's just not even collegiate. It's literally just who can spend the most money on players. That's all it is now. That's yeah. true. It's money bags, Nate Dog, off of the Twitch Prime subs. Yeah, I heard He's Nate gonna... Dogs. I heard Nate uh, Dog's got a scholarship over at UNCW. Offers yeah, you I like, that, I, I heard that. Offers you like a, three meals off a meal plan in a the, year. I, in the terms of the school, they're varsity paid position. Not, they're not nothing else. Because I was just. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we got to get a Nate Dog scholarship going on over there at UNCW. Dude, sponsored by C3. I'm working on it. Don't worry. Let's go. I'm working on it. Oh, Benson. We're going to get a win tonight, right? Are you going to choke again and lose 3-1? That's insane. Don't disrespect my SSL. But being more on the topic of extra, I want to say, yeah. last week, best be streamed. I want this live. I want UNC oh, Wilmington's don't worry. We're on destruction. Stream. Don't worry. I made oh. sure of it. <laughs> yeah, we had a reschedule, and right. uh, the fates aligned. The stars right. have come through. 8 o'clock. Coolio, make sure you're here, as well as everyone else in chat. We're going to have UNCW once again on stream mm -hmm. here for the first mm -hmm. game of the night. And then ECU versus Duke is the second okay. game of the night. So until then, I'll give everyone a final word opportunity, and then we're going to head off and get ready for game number one. ECU is going to clap Duke. <laughs> no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Ben just said that they outscored Temple seventeen to two in three games. So hey, yo, don't hold it they're, up. They're they're hot now. They're they're hot and ready. I'm not don't worried about it. Don't hold it up now. You didn't hold it up behind the casters. Why are you hold it up now? <laughs> you failed us. You failed us. It is behind. No, hang on. No, he's talking trash. I gotta find the clip. Hang on. No. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's wrap this up. Uh, my last word is roll Niners. Roll Forty Niners. No. 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 We win. You're, you're we win. Talk we win. Trash. I'm fine. We win. Hurry up. Wait, hurry up. Hurry up. Wait, I'm hey, off. you I'm just did off. one too. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, oh, don't, be, yeah, don't be slick. I'm gonna clip it because I know I heard it. I said he's talking trash. I gotta pull it up. That's I heard. I heard. I heard another Did word get for him? but. Did we I heard, get him? I heard another word for but. I got the clip right here. It's okay. We got um, the clip. We'll, All we'll right, find it. Nate, we're we'll cashing find it. in. We're cashing That's in on crazy. Nate Dog this I, I don't season. That. I don't know what we appreciate about. everyone tuning in to the first look pre-show. No, I gotta pull the clip. So Hang on. Hold on. I got it right here. Wait, I gotta unmute tab. We're going to hear this. Nah, What's yeah. the ruling? No, wait. I'm waiting. Oh, I might have been wrong. I might have been wrong. Let me I hear think, it. Where is it at? I oh. think I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. You Brutal. Get, I watched the clip back, and I don't think you said it. In, in, in the time, it sounded like it. Dang. What a save. What a save. That's going to do it. <sighs> I just got caught on stream looking dumb. But we'll, it's okay. <laughs> Clip that. Clip that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, everyone. We'll be back at 8 p.m. Eastern time with the C3 cast of week two action, fall 2024 season. Still rolling. We're super excited. We'll catch you all in a bit. ECU.
Hello everyone, welcome to the C3 Esports League stream as we continue our coverage of the fall 2024 regular season. My name is Mac Dewey, with me in the casting booth for some week two action is the founder, the head, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Nate Dog. We've got our first match starting shortly. UNCW takes on Wake Tech looking for redemption after falling short against Clemson last week. As a former coach, Nate, did you did you say anything to the squad? Did you have any words of wisdom during practice this week to get them hyped for some week two action? I mean, I, I kind of just kind of <laughs> came in and just told them to get their stuff together. That's literally what I told them. I joined and said, y'all need to get it together. You got to lock in and get, yep. you need to figure out these mishaps because if we want to have a chance, we cannot... We cannot be faltering in a land that's going to happen on our own campus here as the quick play gets an early kickoff and an early shot and a quick call by Wake Tech. And we are not locked in, ladies and gentlemen. I think that might be slightly the definition of not having their stuff together. It seemed like the Seahawks a little bit of miscommunication there as three seconds here into the first game. It's a best of five series, ladies and gentlemen. Wake Tech starts us off very hot. Looking to keep the ball rolling. Captain Driptane, there's Slug the Rookie with a quick answer, Nate. Huge, huge response. That is what I'd like to see. Slug was in an opportune position. He committed for Boom. the play, didn't hesitate, and he brought in the equalizer. Two goals already happening within the first 13 seconds. That's what I like to see from my UNCW boys. That's what we're talking about. A uh, hype start to game number one here for the first match on the stream here in week two. Flick Filet goes to the air, trying to get the offense rolling after giving up an early equalizer goal. Nate, ball hovering, not going to be a shot there. Deadsy wanted it. He's going to try to get the ball back. Wake Tech having some really nice control of the ball, but it's headed back into their territory. That's one thing I do have to commend Wake Tech on is they, have, they are very good with controlling the possession, controlling the pace of play. Mm -hmm. But as Slug tries to get that touch off the corner, he's trying to beat it past that pace of play and make Wake Tech play at UNCW speed. But one thing is UNCW just needs to be careful of is Wake Tech is very counterattack and they're very counterattacky. They they're huge enthusiasts on the passing play, the cherry picks downfield and trying to get those quick goals as onset, looking for the clear downfield, but Slug there for the shutdown. There we go. Slug control in the middle of the field a little bit there. Solid hit into the corner. Can he set up the team? No. Solid defense and a demo on Driftain is going to change the tide. Slug, though, he's a brick wall in the midfield as Drip looks for an opportunity. Gets a demo of his own. The ball's in Wake Tech's corner. They can't seem to get it out. A solid attack from UNCW, but it hasn't resulted in any shots just yet. Reticle sending the ball back over the midfield mark, trying to get the ball over, goes back into the corner. Drift well, obtained with an unfortunate backflip, but Slug gets a touch with the wall. Is Reticle there? Yes, he is. Gets one touch off the ceiling, not able to follow it up. It's a huge clear downfield and Drift in an awkward position. Oh. A backward touch and it's just offside on that goal line to the left post. Slug trying to get that possession back. Gets a 50, but Drift there for the shutdown in the corner. Now, one thing I gotta say is for Wake Tech here, they're struggling on that boost control. As UNCW seems to be controlling a lot of the boost, and it's helping UNCW stay in the play. Is right there, you can see Dead 17 boost, not able Asked. to really make a play. And a missed opportunity! Oh. Another shot opportunity Another. that we need to make sure we're connecting. Drips trying to get back on defense there, Nate. A really close opportunity there from UNCW, but they couldn't quite close that one out. Wake Tech looking to set themselves up for some offense, but UNCW, Driptane trying to dribble the ball up here. Slug, a setup, reticle going in the air into the corner. Boost is low, I believe, for the Seahawks. Driptane trying to get back on defense here. Flake Filet gets it in the corner. Snipes it there at the top right, and Wake Tech's gonna go up here 2-1 unfortunate situation right there is that flick did not go in uncw's favor and away tech was all over it to get that clear down the field and you saw flick or was it flicker or deadsy going for a little bit of a pressure on the bump of demo trying to free up that space for drifting was not able to get there in time for the save but reticle 
Here for the 50. Slug there, turning for it. Look for the quick no shot. Way. Pulls it, and he slots it in and just <laughs> over Flick Lay. I think he caught him with his pants down right there. Slug the rookie you were talking about during the first look podcast earlier today, Nate. It was going to have to be Slug to step up here in week two for UNCW, and that is two goals so far in game number one of this best of five slug keeping the seahawks in this game now one thing i'm going to say you instead of doing very well right now is just like i said controlling the pressure controlling oh. it slug tries to get the touch your straight drop down and reticle gets the clear down the field deadsy the pop-up off the ceiling onset trying to get a shot angle doesn't connect a drift chain forces a little bit out but he does get the 50 to control it uh, he tries to slow no. it down a slug there for the follow-up gets a shot onset not able to get there he was W is coming in strong in the game one. Slug with the hat trick. Talk about a comeback performance here in rising to the occasion in week two. UNCW, 90 seconds or just under 90 seconds left in this game. They're going to take the lead. A demo on to Slug as Wake Tech. They've got a short amount of time to try and force an overtime that type of situation right here was slug he saw the rate he played it slow he kept control gets a flick and he goes for another shot he tries to get it. slug is doing it himself I'm like a proud father right now <laughs> wow unbelievable game one performance here slug going in the air getting it past the defense and then lands it right smack in the middle of the net uncw extends their lead and if Wake Tech wasn't feeling the pressure of this match before, Nate, they're definitely feeling it now. One minute remaining and two goals they got to get to try and force an overtime here. That was zero boost here. Driftane not able to follow up, but Slug gets the ball. Reticle missed or mechanical. Doesn't connect, but he gets the reset, and it gives him that space to steal that corner boost. It's Edzie looking for the clear to the corner. Looking for a pass downfield. Onset's up. Reticle's there for the challenge. Onset gets it over off the ceiling. And a waterfall. What a beautiful three-man passing play from White Tech there. It looked Let's... like Onset was trying to get that ceiling reset. That's what it looked like. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at the replay here. We see the pass come through. And Wake Tech are staying alive here. This game is far from over, despite there only being 30 seconds left in game number one here it's a best of five nate and i think we've got an exciting series here for us in week number two we saw in that last possession drip still no boost he, he's running around the field with no boost and he's still keeping up the aggression as uncw look to try to extend their lead here 15 seconds left wait tech looking for a miracle drip continuing the offensive pressure and that's gonna do it he doesn't need any boost to come through with the final dagger in game number one but like dead was caught a little bit slow on the goal line here not expecting drip to just push in with that one off of the recovery but extending UNCW to a two goal lead 10 seconds left one thing UNCW has to do is they gotta make sure that you not fall asleep on the pitch here Wake Tech is known for being able to come back very quickly and very efficiently, but Driftane getting the shutdown on one second left. Looks like UNCW is going to take game one. There we go. Not getting swept this time around. And starting off the series hot, four goals for Slug. And I really felt like this one from UNCW was a huge team effort to come up with the win. What? a start to the series, Nate. Really, what stood out to you from UNCW there, the, the changes from last week into this week? Well, to start things off, they can hit their shots a little bit better today. You know, if I remember anything from last week, there was a lot of missed double touches, a lot of missed yeah. passing opportunities. Yeah. Overall, just a lot of missed shot attempts. I mean, but this time, it looks like they're able to connect with them, you know, going into eight shots. I mean, it... Right now, both these teams are relatively even. It just looks like UNCW was able to control the pace a little bit more and put Wake Tech into those awkward situations. But a big shout out to the rookie Slug coming in here and actually, he's actually keeping up with the pace of play. He's playing his game. He's forcing them and playing for his teammates. And, I mean, it's just playing out really well for UNCW. I mean, their cohesion is definitely showing right now. Yeah. Headed into game number two, Wake Tech. I mean, it was a really close game, 4-3 until that final second. 
And uh, I, I was really impressed here from Drip, one of the studs on the UNCW roster, Nate. I mean, he was running around like a chicken with his head cut off, no boost, and it didn't matter. Still keeping up with the aggression on the field. It, it looked like a totally different Seahawks squad here as they take game number one now. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, it's a best of five series. We've got a lot of Rocket League underway as we kick things off here into game number two. Wake Tech, if you remember, game number one, it only took them three seconds to get that first goal. This time, UNCW, their wheels are ready and oiled up. It only takes 13 seconds, though, this time around, Nate. <laughs> I mean, right there, you see Desi get the demo on slug in that back post or in that back post rotation. It just freed up the net perfectly. An unfortunate situation for UNCW, but a great play from Wake Tech as they're able to sneak in that first goal 13 seconds into this game. But the kickoff goes into UNCW's favor. Now Driptane going up for it, going for the solo play, looking for the Driptane double, doesn't connect with it. Is <laughs> Rick Reticle following it up? Gets one touch off the wall. Is slug up? Yes, he is. Driptane there for the shot. Doesn't connect with it, drops it down the reticle, but flick fillet there for the early challenge. Reticle coming in with some boost. The rest of the Seahawks got to get boosted up, but it doesn't matter. Reticle, hey, he can handle it himself, Nate, as I'm starting to see a, a little bit of consistency here from the teams here going back and forth responding. I don't think Reticle got on the board at all, but again, like I said, after game number one, it was a team effort from UNCW coming through and popping off together and giving us a really close series for our first streamed match of the night here in week two of the fall 2024 season drip again struggling with the boost a little bit but we haven't seen that slow him down just yet now desi trying to get a touch off of the backboard here bangs it right back to uncw's drip chain collects but a quick challenge from onset reticle going up looking for drip chain downfield doesn't connect, but Driptane does come up and chase the ball and gets it sent back into the Wake Tech corner about Flick Filet. Looking for a quick shot, pass to Onset. Driptane with a huge save. Onset trying to control this ball to the corner here. Flick Filet takes it, trying to get a challenge, but slugged for the great defensive stop. UNCW was focused on the boost there, Nate. I was worried it was going to come back to bite them, but here we see the solid defense coming out. They weren't on the defense all that much in game number one, but Driptane on the wall slug in front of the net with reticle controlling things it's working really well slug avoiding the demo reticle can't quite get the hit on that ball yet he's looking for a demo he finds it on to onset but a solid clear from wake tech to avoid any offensive opportunities there's going to be driptane getting demoed as well and an opportunity for wake tech to look for the net it's wide open onset just ready and waiting reticle can't quite get it but slug out of nowhere comes through with a huge save and a pinch that goes right back into UNCW's net. An unfortunate situation. A beautiful save comes out from Slug, but an unfortunate pinch between Drip Chain and Flick just sends it right back into the corner where no one can get there. An unfortunate situation. Brutal for the Seahawks. They're going to have to come back from that one. Reticle, though, with the aggression coming through. Can he get it? No, it's a brick wall in front of the Wake Tech net. Let's see UNCW though not holding off on the aggression. It's another demo on to Reticle as Wake Tech look to even up the series at one game apiece. Driptane with a lot of boost is going to bring it across midfield, but Flick Filet is there to answer a demo on to Reticle. The net might be open, but Wake Tech can't quite find the opportunity, can't quite find the shot just yet. The Seahawks no boost here on the map. They're still trying to look for some offense. Slug there gets a full boost there. Driptane goes soaring in the air. Slug waiting. Patient play. Not going to force it there. Ball goes in the corner. UNC Wilmington. Two minutes left. Plenty of time to try to even things up. Onset looking for the shot. Slug is there with another epic save here as they get the ball across midfield. Deadsy misses it. This is an opportunity here for the Seahawks, but Onset is on the wall, ready to go on the defensive pass to Slug. A shot on the net. Deadsy there. Once again, the brick wall holds strong. Now a little bit of a passing opportunity coming from UNCW. We're quickly shut down by Wake Tech here. It's Slug trying to turn for this wall. 
Gets the connection off of the wall. Looking for a pass midfield. The drift chain shut down by Flick Filet. As Redicle gets a demo, but he passes it right to the opponent team. In an unfortunate situation off the backboard. Is Mike Tech going to put it in? Everyone's missing the ball. What am I watching? His slug is, is there for the clear. Chaos. So my Driftane does get a full boost as the action continues, but the time continues to wind down. Slug avoids the demo coming his way as he controls the ball over the field, but UNCW are going to have to do more than just control this ball. I feel like they've been playing on the back wheel here with one minute remaining. Game number two winds down with Wake Tech. The pass, the shot, it just barely misses off the top right corner. Flick Filet looking for another. Reticle trying to get it clear here. He does get the boost, but Denzi is there. Nate continuing the pressure. This Wake Tech offense is absolutely suffocating in the second half of this game. And as Wake Tech puts in the second goal for the two goal lead here, Three to one. One thing I do have to commend Wake Tech is they have a very strong ability to adapt to their opponent's play styles as the games are developing. As right now we are seeing Wake Tech is absolutely dominating the midfield passing plays and they're cutting off all the boost hits, leaving UNCW practically stranded where they're not able to cut off any of these opportunities from Wake Tech. And once again, you can see Reticle starved on boost, a demo on slug. Now everyone on UNCW is starting to struggle once again as Reticle gets it clear to the corner. Onset with 100 boost to his name, gets a 50 off a of reticle. Flick there to follow it up. Slug looking for the bang, doesn't connect, and Driptain has to mop it up for the pass midfield. But one thing, UCW is they need to control the ball in the pace of play. I think that's going to do it for game number two. Is Wake Tech is able to even out the series? This one started off tied 1 1. Is Wake Tech going to get in one more? No, all just barely, Nate. I think you and see Wilmington lucked out there. Uh, Wake Tech pulls up with the win here, three-one in game two in our best of five series. Hey, no clean sweeps here in week two of the C3 season. Very exciting for our stream. As I'm getting excited about this series, man. UNCW came out swinging in game number one wake tech able to respond really solid control of the ball it felt like especially in that second half uncw just couldn't really get anything going offensively nate what do they gotta do in game number three to keep the ball rolling well one thing i've noticed is wake tech is starting to control the midfield they're starting to play a slower game and force uncw to play at their speed mm -hmm. UNCW's got to make sure they're getting there and beating you or beating Wake Tech to these boost pads. Wake Tech is dominating the boost field, and without boost, you're not able to really cut off the passing, the passing lanes in the middle of the field. And by getting those boost pads and getting that midfield advantage, it's leaving UNCW in a constant 12 to 13 boost range, where the, it's very hard to defend and get any type of momentum going off, going off of that. Yeah. It's going to be a very yeah, difficult sure. aspect. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised we'll I didn't get booted from the game, to be honest. <laughs> I was fully, expect fully expecting it. Not yet. Ready to go. Let's do it. Game number three. The victor of this one, Nate, goes to match point. Driptane immediately starting off, going for the boost, looking for the shot there. It's reticle, but it's Dead Sea with a huge save to stop the early scoring from happening. This time it's UNCW with the early aggression right out of the kickoff. An open net, looking for the pass. It's there, Dead Z and on set. Work together for Wake Tech's first goal of the game. Man, once again right there, UNCW, they're starting to display a lot of their things that they were showing in the Clemson game, but they're just not connecting. The confidence is starting to break, and they're not controlling any type of pace here. They're just pretty much giving Wake Tech all the space in the world that they need to play as Reticle collects that mid-boost, but still gets beat up by Onset. Now Driftane on that goal line here, trying to get a touch. Slug jumps a little bit ahead for the cut. Onset looking for the double touch. Connects, but it goes right back to UCW's corner. Slug getting one pinch down the field. Driftane trying to collect and follow. Doesn't get the mid-boost here. It's leaving on set with a little bit more space as he beats Reticle. Goes for the must. He doesn't connect and slug. Gets a challenge. Now trying to get one more. And once oh. again, UNCW is leaving their teammate in dead man. Or no man. Yeah, whatever you want to say. On set plus flick fillet combining there. Again, control of the ball, control of the field coming up huge for them. 
UNCW scrambling for answers here. Is Wake Tech just going to keep their foot on the gas pedal? Whenever I see an open net, Nate, I start to worry a little bit about UNCW's defense. But here's Reticle trying to set things up. Going over. Drip chain off the wall. It's a save. Wake Tech only one goal against them between game two and game three. And there is a third. Dead Z, two goals already, and we're just over one minute into this one. Wake Tech dominating game number three. I have no words right now without you instead of he's flying, they're playing too aggressive when they're 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 leaving their teammates in a 1v2 and 1v3 situation. And that situation right there with a quick shot from Reticle with a huge save from Dead Z. So like they're gonna follow it up, but no power on the shot. And he's starting to just a little bit of the inconsistency. It's ready to go for a quick shot. Shut down. Bro, oh, oh, so target. close. What's another on. one? And it's off the backboard. Is anyone there to put it up? No, Onset's there for the clear to the corner. Missed opportunities here for the Seahawks. And who's going to be left on defense? Driptane tried to get there. A huge save to kind of keep their their wheels in reach of this game here. Driptane going to try to bring the ball up here. Wake Tech coming up with almost full boost. There's a full one for Onset. The mid boost going his way. Reticle trying to play on defense here, but when Flick Filet is sitting on your defensive wall, mate, I feel like it's a recipe for disaster. Now Onset controlling the ball, trying to go over the defense, trying to set up the team, and that's going to do it. Flick Filet gets his second goal of the game. Two Wake Tech players sitting one goal away from a hat trick in this game three couldn't have gone any better for Wake Tech. They are just firing on all cylinders. I mean, re realistically there, Flick Filet got a great goal, but you got to come in on set on the bump attempt. He flicked it up off the backboard, trading out one defender. Then he managed to get the second with a quick shot from Reticle and a missed opportunity. That should have been a goal right there. Oh, that, that, there's on, no, no excuse one. for that one not being a goal right there. A slug trying to collect with zero boost gets demoed. The double demo from Wake Tech here. A reticle trying to get a clear down the field off the backboard here. Anyone there to follow up? Reticle there again, but gets beat out by Flick Filet and Slug getting a quick challenge there. Driftane with a little bit of a mistouch there and sends it right into Onset's play of field. UNCW gonna try to control things in the middle of the field, but the Wake Tech offense continues to roll. Going into the middle of the field, Flick Filet is there going off the backboard. A Wake Tech member right there, ready to go. Driftane, a huge save keep this game in reach looking for a little shot on goal there reticle with the save and the demo let's see can Wilmington do something with this slug trying to bring it up the field but the defense is there wake tech not letting anything get through barely any shots on goal from uncw now reticle going off the ceiling trying to look for something anything nate dog but it's not going to be there on set can't defend all the shots there's the offense as uncw finally gets on the board. UNCW finally able to get one in there that might be the slight momentum change they need. They might not be able to win game three here, but they might have the opportunity to take that going into the next game, the mm -hmm. game four. Over the minute 42, there's a lot of things that can go in either team's favor. Slug it tries to follow this one. The Drift rookie the dribble. The dribble off the backboard. Oh, Drift chain no! off the crossbar. Those are those type of shots you gotta connect with. Is that would have put it down to a two goal lead with only wasting like seven seconds on the clock? Is a shot from Wake Tech with a beautiful save from Driptane. Reticle trying to follow it up here. Deadsy beats him to the punch here. Slug trying to follow it out, but shut down by Onset with a cross cut. Driptane looking for the pass upfield, but Deadsy with a huge pinch across the field here. Reticle looking for the pass midfield. The slug, but no one from UNCW able to follow up as Flick Play is demo chasing. W a minute left, three goals and a dream. It seems unlikely, but I know on the field anything is possible. Can they do it? Not a lot of boost. Reticle and Slug, the engines are low. The net is open and Driptain comes up huge. Slug with a full head of boost coming through, looking for something. It goes to the corner. Reticle doesn't get quite the touch he would have wanted for that one. And now the ball soaring towards the Seahawks goal. A huge save there from Slug. But with 30 seconds left, Nate, they're going to need a miracle to come through. Reticle there gets it. Two goals is the lead. 25 seconds, though. Not a lot of time left on the clock. 
I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's definitely improbable here. But right now, one thing I'm definitely seeing is UNCW starting the game a little bit of confidence back. They're still yeah. playing a little sloppy here. They're missing some important touches, missing some things. But it's working in their favor. It's a quick cut from Flick Filet is reticle trying to get a touch to the corner. Gets a dribble over wow. onset. That's like taking it up himself. Beats one. Off the they ceiling. Goes for the touch. Doesn't connect with it. And reticle with a huge miss. And it looks like that one might cause the end of the game right there. As Driptane gets the bump on a White Tech player. Three. You can see Driptane's car understand that there is not enough time to pull through with the victory. <laughs> Wake Tech are going to spike the ball onto the field. They take game number three to go to match point, Nate. What a game there. Slug, he had four goals in the first game, now struggling a little bit in the series. Oh, wow. What a start to the game Wake Tech had here in game three, Nate. I mean, back to back. To back to back goals they started off hot 4-0 lead i believe and just a crazy performance here the team working super well on set had three assists in this game nate really solid performance here it's been a team effort from wake tech absolutely i mean wake tech came out they were incorporating a lot of bumps and demos which is definitely freeing up the pitch and with that and the mixture of the infield control it was just it was devastating for UNCW, especially with the lack of boost they were able to collect. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of missed pads on UNCW's. They were trying to go for those big boost pads a little bit too much, creating those gaps for Wake Tech to really take advantage of. One thing I'm definitely going to say is they need to control the midfield with those small pads. They should be able to dominate the midfield with that type of play style, but it's just at the moment they're not executing it at the at the extent that they need to be executing it. All right, game number four. Match point, the Seahawks back up against the wall. They got to leave it all on the field here as we get ready to go. Game number four is kicked off. Wake Tech flick filet, no boost in a dream, trying to look to set up his team. Dead Z, can they return some of the favor to Onset, who had three assists in the last game. Reticle, a solid setup. Flick filet there on the defense. Dead Z, no boost. Driptane's got a decent amount. Reticle's full. Slug is full. Can they make something happen? A little bit of miscommunication, I feel like, there. Between Reticle and Slug looking for the same hit there on the ball. Now Dead Z controlling the ball there in the corner on the UNCW side of the field. Onset getting tumbled around in the air. Reticle, no boost. Wake Tech looking for some offense, but it's a solid clear UNCW, though. The ball gets caught by Onset in the middle of the field. One thing I'm definitely going to say is UNCW is starting to look like they're coming out with a little bit more pressure into this one. This play mm -hmm. like gets a beat from Undriftane. Deadsy looking for the touch midfield. Slug for the quick challenge. Beautiful play from UNCW as Ontake tries to joint it up the field. But Reticle there for the quick read. The play trying to get it clear. Driftane off the backboard with a bump on Reticle. Slug, can he do it? Slug no! doesn't connect. Those are the type of situations Slug you got to connect with. A wide open play right there. The bump in the net. you got to put it on target. The drip tank tries to collect to the corner, but Onset beats out Reticle. 50 from Drip. Dezzy with the fake. Now bump attempt on Reticle. All Dezzy has to do is score it. And a huge save from Reticle on the goal line. That seems like a double Seahawk effort there. Two defenders with the save, ready to defend the net, but it's another Wake Tech opportunity off of the backboard. Can they connect? Onset looking for the shot. Who's going to come through? Deadsy, Onset, somebody. Can they finish it? No, Driptane comes through with the save. Reticle clears it out, and UNCW somehow survives that nightmare situation. Slug looking for the corner. What's the demo into the score? The Seahawks finally find the back of the net and take the lead 1-0. Look at this one. That might be the game changer here for UNCW. Wow. They were able to make that adjustment. They are switching it up, applying that pressure. And now Slug, the rookie, coming out and getting the goal, taking it quick into UNCW's favor as Reticle goes for the fake attempt with Dead Z for the cut. Now all three Wake, players, Wake Tech players up quickly, forced to make an awkward touch here. Now Slug with a little bit of a hezzy there. Let's onset, start controlling the pace a little bit. But those are the type of situations where you should not be hesitating. You've got to commit to the play as Slug gets a 50 out. Drift chain. 
Yeah, goes for the cut. Gets shut down by Flick Filet. Now Slug's trying to get a touch to the corner here. Collects the mid with the full boost. So a little bit of a mistouch pinch, but no one there to challenge it. But Slug's just a little bit too slow to the 50. I'm holding my breath here. Game number four has been so, so close. Only one goal so far, and Slug bringing the ball up the field. A touch missed there from Reticle. Camp with the ball in the middle of the field, and now Wake Tech trying to control things as they look for an offensive opportunity, but Reticle sends it soaring back off of the wall. Slug can't quite get there. Driptane, no boost. Has to look back on defense. Slug may be looking for a demo, but can't quite find anyone. Now Wake Tech with the control here with the shot on goal but it's Driptane another clutch save Nate Dog what can't he do on the defensive end he's been coming in clutch here in game number four but he can't save them all as onset equalizes this game now UNCW is doing strong here but White Tech just a little bit better on that play here maintaining the pressure getting the cuts onset with a quick challenge off of the wall there's not much units that we can do there as if they're caught in a little bit of no man's land. Slow goose, slug trying to push up for the play. Last man back has a little bit of a gap, a little bit slower, but a quick shot. Slug got to get this touch off the backboard. Can't flip into it. He runs out of boost and it fakes out the Wake Tech player. But Dezzy wow. goes for a quick shot and Driftane there again gets the bump. A 50 midfield. Dezzy, awkward situation for Wake Tech. Awkward for both the teams, but Flick Blake collects it. Driftane gets the beat, looking for the follow-up, but Dezzy slightly faster to that play as Slug getting the touch midfield onset off the ceiling, looking for the pass, the 50 off of Flick. Now Driftane looking for the downfield Got pass the boost. Slug. An opportunity here, back the Reticle? one, two, three, not able no! to it. Slug, Slug. Slug. put it in, yeah! and they do it! UNCW, the three-man passing play. Beautiful execution, opportunities. That one should have been on target, but we'll take it. UNCW brings it to a two or a one goal lead. Unbelievable game four performance here from UNCW. We are talking about Slug being a little quiet in these past two games, but he has shown in this match point with their back up against the wall. Slug is rising to the occasion. Now can the Seahawks continue to do it? It is Slug yet again coming through with a huge save. Now Reticle looking for another onset. Barely saves that one as Wake Tech. 45 seconds left. Only one goal down. They are still very much in this game, in this match. One win away from sending the Seahawks home with an 0-2 start to the season. We can tell the UNCW players do not want that to happen they are playing like their lives depend on it reticle looking for the defensive stop and he gets it unbelievable saves from uncw here in this deciding match uh, uncw coming out strong as, as we talked about in the first look podcast this is really a, a stated or show it match for uncw they have to win this one to have any type of reputation in the league as slug goes for the quick cut on the uh, passing lane a uh, drip chain a little bit of a mistouch here Onset tries to get control. Reticle there to follow it. The 2-1 lead. Wake Tech has to score it here. Zero seconds on the clock. UNCW is going to put it down to take game four. Or, yeah, game four. We're taking us to game five. Yes, sir. Game number five. Can I get some game five claps in the chat here? As this has been an absolutely crazy series to start off week number two unbelievable nate i can't believe it slug two goals two saves off of three shots driptane with three saves reticle with two saves as well these seahawks absolutely playing out of their mind i mean slug is definitely here showing that he is here to compete in this league he's here to compete he's here to show that he can keep up with these high gc's ssl teams and i mean coming in slug i believe is a champ three coming out here and he really wants to showcase what he can do he's just definitely a lot more confidence in his play style here and that he's made it past his first match of the season but going into this next one what are a few things that you think uncw should really look at oh gosh i mean when they keep just making big play after big play i'm trying to jot down notes here nate but all I'm doing is talking about the rookie stud. Can he come through for one more game? UNCW needs it. Wake Tech and the Wilmington Seahawks going to game number five here in week number two. 
This one's big for both teams as we get back onto the field, Nate. I'm thinking Wake Tech, they started off red hot, but UNCW controlled the ball so, so well in game number four. Can they do it again? Can they keep the miracle saves coming? Can they defend their net? Let's find out here as game number five is underway. Now Slug trying to get that clear, doesn't connect with it. Drift King gets beat and Wake Tech comes back with an early goal. 1-0 Wake Tech. Now that's one thing UNCW's got to be careful of is those types of touches right there. But Slug kind of caught in a little bit of a corner bounce, not able to get the touch that he was looking for. And it just put Drip Chain in an awkward situation where, I mean, worst case scenario, just try and get a 50 on it, make a move. Because if you don't and you hesitate, not only are you confusing the opponent, but you're also confusing your teammate. And that's the worst possible thing that can happen. You want to try and make your teammate not have to guess what you're doing. And Flick Play gets an early flick. Redico there for the clear, but no one in the net for the save. Slug with the squishy oh. save. Now what all three a beautiful UNCW save, mate. And a UNCW gets the clear. Back to back big saves from Slug. I was just so excited. I wanted to talk about it immediately, man. This rookie coming up in a huge way, but Wake Tech still controlling the ball, still on offense. Wilmington trying to get a clear here. Reticle and Slug do not have a lot of boost to work with here. As Slug gets demoed, the wet, the net is open. And that's gonna be a 2-0 lead here in game number five. Wake Tech playing angry. They're upset about the last match and how that went, and they're coming out swinging. They've got a two-goal lead here in the first minute. Now, UNCW seems to be struggling just quite a bit with the... No way. Oh, no. An no way. Off goal, and it takes it to a three-goal lead. An unfortunate situation for UNCW. I mean, that's definitely a dagger in the heart right there. It's like trying as hard as to get back. Doesn't connect with it. Onset gets the 50. I mean, those are the type of situations that can really break morale. But as long as you stand strong, I do think they have a little bit more of a chance in the game. Let's see. There's plenty of time left on the clock. And again, it's going to be a tough situation here. This is just like game number three where Wake Tech dominated. They're going to keep the aggression going. UNC Wilmington struggling to control the ball heel here, struggling to get any sort of offense going. Driftane looking for a shot, barely off. A huge save from Onset as Slug's shot goes wide. They put everything into that offensive push. Nobody was on the defensive end, and it comes back to bite them as Wake Tech get yet another goal going up 4-0. That's that type of situation you really just gotta not overcommit. In that situation, like, as a coaching advice to Slug right here, you gotta notice that both your teammates are full committed. Drips in one corner, Reds in the other. As Redicle gets the touch off the backboard, Onset's there for the clear. He wanted that one. He wanted to keep up the performance here. Three minutes down four goals. UNC Wilmington, can they do it? Driptane looking to set up the offense, but Flick Filet is there on the side wall. Slug off of the backboard. There's Reticle! That's a huge goal that they needed to get themselves back in. We're not even at the half point of the game yet, Nate. And that was huge for momentum to get them right back where they wanted to be. Let's get the ball rolling again. A comeback, uh, unlikely here a little bit, but a little more possible. After that goal, let's see what the Seahawks can do. Onset there for a quick clear across the net. Slug there to retaliate with a quick challenge. Looking for the pass back to Driptane. Driptane, no boost, not able to really connect with it. Does play for the 50, isn't able to get there in time. Now, once again, you can see UNCW missing every boost pad on the thing. And it's, I think it's coming down to a boost management issue right now. UNCW is missing every pad. They're flipping too much, putting themselves out of position. And Wake Tech has just found a way to capitalize and exploit every single one of those advantages. What a shot there. That one hurts for the UNC Wilmington fans. I know they were hoping for that one to come through in a big way. And that shot halfway here into this game, back down four goals. Slug looking for something. Driftane trying to play with some patience, but he's lacking some agency here. 
Flick filet looking for a shot drip team, trying to control the ball here over the middle of the field. Onset's got a lot of boost to play with. Flick filet is there. The pass into the middle. The three-man pass can't quite come through. Dead Z a little over the goal, but beautiful teamwork here as Wake Tech continue to set themselves up with opportunity after opportunity. Now Dead Z. Uh, again, you're talking about not overcommitting, playing with patience, Wake Tech communicating really well here in game number five when they needed it most. They're draining time off of this clock as just a hundred seconds are left in game five. UNC Wilmington, they've got to get some goals on the board here. Yeah, if UNCW can't find some type of momentum here, it looks like this game is going to go in Wake Tech's favor as Onset gets the touch against Slug, gets the reset, but drops down for Flick Flick Filet. Now Flick Filet trying to get a double tap here, but Reticle gets the read, trying to get one touch. Slug there for the follow with a little bit of an awkward bounce, not able to connect, but he does bump Flick Filet here. A drip tank gets the beat, but once again, UNCW left with no boost on the field. A little bit of an awkward situation here, and I think... I think it's going to come down to UNCW just not having the boost. Oh. A huge double commit there. And I think that might be the nail in the coffin for UNCW. Brutal, not able to get anything over the middle of the field. And there's Flick Play capitalizing eight shots on goal. Four of them making it their way into the back of the net. Flick Play popping off here in game five. Talking about an MVP for the match, Flick Filet making his case. Wake Tech, my goodness, 6-1 lead, looking for more. A demo going both ways. In the middle of the field, onset controlling things. This is gonna be a tough end for UNCW. 30 seconds left, five goals needed. Not very likely, Nate. Unfortunately, UNCW is going to be starting the fall 2024 season with some growing pains here. 0 and 2 through the first two weeks. I think right now UNCW is just falling. They're falling down in a hole. The confidence isn't there. Is it there for another shot attempt from Flint Lane? Passing it back down to Onset Slug. There for the quick challenge. But it's just it's too late with 10 seconds left. Wake Tech looks like they're going to take this one, bring it to a Brazil. No drip team says not today. And a huge pinch off the net here. Wake Tech looking to get that Brazil here, but looks like drip team is just trying to drop it down. Reticle gets the 50 out. A slug trying to get one more. A drop down by Dedzi, and it looks like they might get to Brazil. 7 1. <laughs> Wake Tech clears them out in game five. Way. The cherry on top. Flick filet. Dedzi on set shout ggs in the chat they're feeling good the buzzer beater for the brazil unbelievable performance here wake tech showed up when it mattered most here seven goals in game number five what a pop-off performance here as unc goes down yeah, I mean, right there, UNCW, they had the momentum. They definitely, I would say, they definitely improved than how they were against the Clemson game. I yeah. definitely would say yeah. that they improved. But I think the biggest problem UNCW is lacking right now is boost management and consistency. There's yeah. a lot of missed opportunities here where UNCW wasn't able to capitalize on shot opportunities. They weren't able to capitalize on boost usage to stay relevant in the play. Too much big boost pads. If you're not able to get the big boost pads, you got to get the small pads. You can do a lot on the field just chilling around at 20 to 30 boosts, and you can get that off of two or three pads. That's a very yeah. easy thing to do. You just got to learn the correct rotations. And if you're making the incorrect rotations, you're going to inherently miss those pads. And I think that definitely showed tonight. Yeah, for sure. And shout out for Wake Tech, uh, the, the coordination between the three players out there on the field really stood out to me for the plays they were making consistently on defense, making big plays as well. But even just, it, it, it felt like they didn't even have to play all that much defense there in game number five. Am I right, Nate? Oh, no, it lo definitely looked like Wake Tech was controlling the pace of that game majority mm -hmm. of the time. Um, and it, it's it's nothing really against UNCW in their play style, but Wake Tech did right. play a great game. They, can, they I mean, their possession, their control of play, was super strong. I mean, they controlled the pace of play. They had the midfield control. 
They were getting bumps and demos in the process. And yeah. through that, yeah. I think they were just able to bring it into Game 5. And major props to Wake Tech. They beat out ECU. They beat UNCW. And I think they're starting off the season 2-0 and oh now. Wow. What a start as we get ready for a post-game interview, Nate. We're going to hop into a quick break here on stream. Don't click out of that browser. We'll be back in just a few moments with one of the members from the Wake Tech Rocket League squad to talk through this huge victory and this big, big start to the season for them. As you mentioned, 2 and O. Oh, we'll hear from them in just a sec.
Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for sticking around here on the stream. We've got our post-game interview here with the match MVP from our first series here in week number two of the fall 2024 season. Wake Tech's own Flick Filet coming through in a big way here in the close series against UNCW. Before we hop in and talk about this series, uh, why don't you give just a quick intro? Uh, what are you doing over at Wake Tech uh, for the stream? So I'm currently in my second year. Very um, cool. I am a like business administration, business analytics major. Sweet. Um, and so you know, I've been doing that. So I've been with the team since last year, uh, okay. last fall. I didn't play in the spring, but um, you know, decided to run it back in the summer. So we've just been playing since then. Awesome. Well, good stuff, man. How does it feel coming into the fall 2024 season through two weeks here? You guys have started off 2-0 against some big wins uh, against ECU and UNCW. Yeah, we're feeling pretty good. I mean, over the summer, you know, me, Dead Zeno, you know, we put in a lot of hours. So, mm -hmm. you know, just being able to see that in the yeah. play, it's, it's great, you know, to you know, beat these great teams. So we're, we're very happy with how we started. For sure. I'm really excited to see this was uh, week one, a, li a little boring on stream, but this, this first match here in week two was really popping off. And uh, a big part of that was y'all synergy there on the field. It, when it came down to game number five here against UNCW, a pretty close uh, game four, how do you guys reset yourselves and come out and dominate game five like that? Yeah, so, I mean, at the start, it was tough because, mm -hmm. obviously, we weren't home for the past few days, so we haven't been mm -hmm. able to just get in the hours. But So we weren't confident going into the series, but mm -hmm. as we kept going on, we just kind of realized what we needed to do, what we needed to fix, and, you know, we just made the right moves and went into game five with, you know, a good mindset and just crushed it. Yeah, for sure. What kind of stood out to you guys as big things to fix headed into the series? Uh, probably going quicker as first man. Mm -hmm. You know, we were kind of just hesitant a little bit, but mm -hmm. just kind of realized what we needed to do and, you know, made the changes needed and we, we got it done. Huge. Yeah, absolutely. Big win here. Looking forward to seeing how you guys continue on through through the rest of the season. Before I let you go out of the post game interview, want to let you have an opportunity here. Do you have any shout outs that you want to give out on stream here? Ooh, I'm going to shout out my team. And, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the score the last game, but I'm just going to say <laughs> one thing. I'm just going to say, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, indeed. Okay. Flick Filet, my guy, thank you so much for joining us here in the post-game interview. Uh, a happy rest of the week for you. I know this is going to be huge from the league for, for the one. team's morale. I already got banned in the spring. I remember that. <laughs> that emergency sub came in. It wouldn't be the first time, Nate. Oh, gosh. All, all love here in the league. Appreciate you, Flick Filet. Hope you have a good one, man, and appreciate you coming on for the post-game interview as well. All right. Appreciate you guys. And that's going to do...
I don't know. They, they chalked it. They chalked it, brother. <laughs> Game no, they, is, they, no, brother, brother, they leave the game. <laughs> leave the game. <laughs> brother, they, they Oh, gosh. We're dealing it. with some uh, some fun, fun technical difficulties on the... Uh, <laughs> as our brains melt here on um, stream... Remake the, remake the lobby, remake the lobby. Just, just keep a little... Just, just go back. Hey, technical issues. We're going back. We're going back. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so, so much for sticking with us. We've got everyone in the lobby. I don't think we'll have any random bot games. Instead, it is the real second match of the night here tonight. Duke Gaming taking on the ECU Pirates. I see a lot of ECU fans wanting to slam the ECU over, but we'll see how that goes as we get geared up and ready to go for game number one. I appreciate everyone taking the time to come through and check out our stream tonight. My name's Mac Dewey. With me in the booth is my main man, Nate Dog, the founder, the big man himself. Hanging in there, I know it's a tough UNCW loss here, but we're going to have to go on to bigger and brighter matches here as game number one gets underway between these two teams. 
Now, right now, we have Duke versus East Carolina. What a huge miss by Pigs and Sheep here, and Sheep Not Silver going for the backboard pinch here. Now, this one should be a pretty hefty win for ECU, as I'm pretty sure they oh, they heavily outrank Duke. But the never say never, Duke has the opportunity here. This Pig Sheep goes for the quick shot. Jeffrey tries to get the redirect. It doesn't connect, and ECU with the counterattack. It'll be a fun one. Duke and ECU both starting off the season with losses, but here come the Pirates storming the beach. Getting an early goal here in the first 30 seconds. Chief not sober, helping things out with a demo. And there comes Glare getting it into the back of the net. Duke took on South Carolina last week, which was a tough task for a new team coming onto the C3 scene, right? Right, Nate? Oh, absolutely. I mean, last season, USC finished, they ended up finishing second at land, second in the league. And then coming in, the new team coming out fresh into this season, playing the number two seed from last season. It basically sinks another one, bringing this to a two goal lead. And right now, Duke is honestly looking a little bit more outpaced than they were at the USC game. Wild to think that, right? Like, you know, Kevin Hayes is like, oh, it's not going to be as bad as the USC game, but this isn't a great start. Duke's got to find a way to get this pace under control just a little bit. Cheap with a full engine of boost looking to dribble things up over the midfield, but can't quite get it. But ECU, the offense unrelenting. HN just barely getting in there to kind of control the ball. All the Pirates are fueled up, Nate, and they're ready to go for another offensive push. Not a lot of boost for Duke. Yeah, with Duke looking a little bit outpaced, Etchen getting a little bit of a miss on the wall here. Pigs trying to follow it up, gets beat out by Glare. Now Jeffrey trying to get a touch in the corner here, beat out by Glare once again. Sheep trying to get a touch back midfield here. Pigs and Sheep with a pinch off the backboard. And right now it's looking like Duke is just trying to get some momentum going as Glare cuts off Sheep but gets it clear down the field to basically. No and they way. followed up with a tag wow. team play to bring it to a three goal lead. That was OxyClean. Oh my gosh, look at the ECU synergy there. What a pass from basically there to set things up and they're gonna extend the lead 3-0. They're just doing such a good job. I mean, on the defensive end, setting things up. They're not wasting any time as they continue getting shots on goal. Glare almost gets his hat trick early on. We're not even halfway through this game and ECU continue to create opportunities on the offensive end. Now Chief going for a reset here, trying to get a play, gets oh it my back God. one. Almost gets the bump on the second, but doesn't connect. Is basically there to drop it right back into a four goal lead. Unfortunate situation for Duke here. Etching just gets a little bit of a rough touch. Basically, there to outpace Pig and Chief just a little bit. And this is not looking too good for Duke right now. And it's starting to get some flashbacks to the USC game. I'm starting to see a little bit of, of why Nuts was hoping to slam the ECU over. But here comes Duke trying to get a shot. There we go, HN passes it to Jeffrey and they land it in the top left corner here of the net. Solid setup and, uh, and Nate, I, I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't know what was gonna happen if that shot didn't go in because Duke was heavily committed there on the offensive end. I'm a little disappointed in ECU, honestly. <laughs> I mean- Biggest surprise for next week on the pod. I mean, I'm a little disappointed <laughs> right there. You know, ECU should have had the save, and a huge save from Pigs and Sheep. Speak of the devil, the blue devil. Ah, there we go. Got it, got it. Ah. So basically, gets the shot off the backboard. Sheep there to pop it down. Pigs and Sheep gets the shut down. Going for a quick shot on net, but clear. There for the clear out to the wall. Jeffrey gets a touch back to the other side, where basically he's there to collect. And honestly, it looks like Duke is starting to pick up the pace just a little bit. So they get a touch mid, but no one there to capitalize. Now Pigs and Sheep trying to collect a little bit here on the corner. It gets outpinched by basically ECU he trying to turn boost. up the Jets here. Saves coming through. Duke playing better on the defensive end here in the second half of this game, but they got a big hill to climb up. Down three goals with under two minutes remaining. Can they pull off the comeback? 
We'll see a lot of boost on the ECU side as basically controls things. The 50-50 goes to Wave H and no. Trying to get the ball in the corner. Jeffrey looking to set the team up. Glare is there on the wall. Ready to go. Chief not sober. A lot of boost. Passing it to basically. Looking for the shot. The 50-50 goes the Pirates way into the shot. Glare finishes it off. And with 90 seconds left, it seems like ECU are ready to move on into the next game. What a offensive move there. I mean, the team just firing, clicking super well here. Despite starting the season off with a loss, they came here tonight in week number two, ready to go. Now, I will say it looks like Duke is playing with a sub on the field. Jeffrey is not a usual roster starting member here. And so he's like they're missing out one of their key members from the USC game, Zastrio. And that might be a big game changer here for the Blue Devils. Is force to play with your sub, someone who might not be at the same pace and rank here as Chief. It tries to get a touch to the midfield, followed up by basically Jeffrey with a sub. Shut my mouth. Jeffrey trying to show that he belongs <laughs> here. Uh, you stop one, sure, but there comes the second shot, basically. Coming up, Glare off the backboard, setting up his team. Chief Not Sober was there as well. Six goals here in game number one as ECU starts off the series in dominating fashion. Now we start playing for morale, I, I think, Nate, a little bit to try to get, you know, a little bit more comfortable in this series. Let's see if we can control the ball a little bit better here for the last 50 seconds. A base game, looking at Glare. Glare to basically. Jeffrey, with a beautiful save, put this man in SSL lobbies. But he's not <laughs> able to follow it up as a huge save from Etchen as he gets it off the goal line, trying to stop the Brazil here. Duke trying to maintain a little bit of reputation as Etchen gets to clear down the field. Chief trying to follow it up. Goes for the shot. Chief with the messed up touch and almost a scoring opportunity for the Blue Devils. So, so close. But ECU still pulling ahead, only 15 seconds left in this one. Another Brazil moment potentially coming up here. Let's see if ECU can pull it off. Six seconds, trying to get the ball the towards the net. The Are they going to do it? Come on, Chief No, Dr. they Dover. don't. Not going to be able to get it. The ball finally touches that one. So, so close, ECU. Taking care of business here, Nate, I believe, in game one. Solid performance. A double hat trick here between Basically and Glare. What a start to the series. They're feeling pretty good about that one, I think. You know, ECU, no slouches here in the league. Uh, chat roasting Chief not sober a little bit, though. No goals from the Chief here to start the series off. I know, honestly, Chief might be a little bit washed here. They might have to take this man and put him on the bench and bring up uh, Noah or Nuts <laughs> to take his place. It's a little bit unfortunate here. But, you know, Chief, he's just he's trying to he's trying to show off too much. He's trying to get those sober pinches off of the backboard. He's yeah. not able to connect. He's got five shots, zero goals. Put this man on the bench. He doesn't belong here. Um, <laughs> but with that being said, honestly, Duke held their own even without their starter, which is honestly very... Which is honestly, it's it's a pretty got the best good score. showing for Duke. It's pretty showing. I know I was I was trashing on Jeffrey over here, thinking he was a little bit outpaced, but then he's he's outshining his teammates here. I mean, Jeffrey is telling me to shut my mouth here, but I think if they can work on a few different things, like specific touches or like specific ball control, and kind of play into their spe like their yeah specialties <laughs> and what they excel at, I think they might stand a little bit more of a chance. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, when you look at a start to the series like this, Nate, what goes into your mind for trying to slow ECU down? We're getting into game number two. Duke doesn't have a whole lot of time to adapt to the series here. They're going to try their best, but uh, I mean, it, for me, you got to control the boost in the ball a little bit better here, but uh, against the way ECU is playing, I feel like that's better said than done. HN trying to defend the ball. Duke, not a lot of boost here on the defensive end. Trying to make it work as Chief Not Sober gets demoed, is sent to the bench for a quick way to get there. HN going to try to control the ball across midfield here, but loses control in ECU. Looking to capitalize, basically dribbling it up in past the defense and in the back of the net. You know, there's not much you can really do there. Basically, he is an SSL after all. 
And pig, pig and sheep, you had the right idea, you just flipped the wrong way. My big advice to Duke right here is you gotta play confident. You gotta go into these games and you gotta challenge them quickly. You gotta play confident with your abilities. If you give basically your glare any type of space, both these players being SSLs, they're going to use that space efficiently. They're gonna be mechanical, they're gonna play fast. And if you give them the opportunity to play at your pace, I mean, honestly, being a lower rank than them, you actually have a very strong chance to fake them out, believe it or not. I've done it to them myself here and there. <laughs> hey, they might play for you, you to hit a shot that you don't, you aren't going to hit, and that might give <laughs> some opportunities here. So I have full faith in y'all. Get it going off the backboard. Basically, gets to clear out. Picks it with a quick shot. Blocked out by Chief Not Sober for basically to collect. This is like the 3D chess of, like, if they don't expect me to do this move, then maybe... They just won't be ready for it, but basically continues to find his way to the back of the net in under a minute from the last one. He's up to two goals, and Duke continue to struggle to find an answer against this strong ECU squad here. I believe at the preseason power rankings, ECU was up there, Nate, and I think they're showcasing why here in this series on stream. Chief Sober, a little upset at the bench talk. He's going to be looking for some demos as Glare gets a quick goal. You know, he can be as uh, upset as he wants, but with 14 points on the scoreboard, he's got to do better. You know, he's not really assisting his team much here. He's just kind of letting basically and Glare kind of carry him into this one. But, you know, Duke has made a few adjustments here. One thing is they just got to play confident here is Pig and Sheep trying to get a quick challenge here, but Glare beats him out with a little bit of a free jump. Jeffrey gets a touch. One more not able to follow up with his Chief. He tries to get one. Another missed opportunity. Just passing it to his teammates. On target here, and Glare gets in. Pig isn't able to get the save. And once again, once again, no, nothing for Chief. Sitting at a measly 16 points on the scoreboard. Well... We aren't even halfway through this one, Nate. And ECU has taken over. Zastria is in the chat. He believes in the Blue Devils. Improbable comeback. They might have to look at a reverse sweep at this rate. Not even halfway through this one. ECU, another big lead. Let's see if Duke can get on the board here. But it's glare in the air, soaring above the Devils, getting another demo into the shot. There's Jeffrey. But another, there, there's a demo in him. What do you do, Nate? <laughs> Play faster. I mean, that's the biggest thing I'm going to say about getting demoed on the pitch is that means you're probably playing a little bit too slow. If the rotations are getting there, there's a wide open net, slips through the Blue Devil's fingers. Now, basically, trying to control it. Gets the flip up. Gets one more touch. But he fakes out Chief. If Chief bumps his own teammate, gets this man off the pitch. Now Pig Chief in a 1v2 situation gets the beat, or gets beat by it basically. Basically gets the top up, but blocked out by Itchin. Now Chief trying to play for a midfield pass here to his teammate, but basically they're reading the 50, gets the touch. One thing I will say, the Blue Devils are starting to control the pace just a little bit more mm -hmm. as Galare is there to collect in the corner. Two minutes remaining, four goals and a dream. Duke trying to get back on the defensive end, but Aachen just not there in the right position. Trying to chase the ball, but can't get in the net. Did not have any boost, Nate. And looking for the slushy save. I think just a little slow on that front as the lead extends to five. Duke trying to find an answer, but can't seem to come to much. Chief going off of the ceiling, looking for some more offense. Glare looking for another shot, trying to set up the rest of the team. Only 90 seconds left in this one. Duke got to be maybe thinking about the next one. I mean, at this point right here, Duke, they might have to start thinking about the next one, but one thing they need to take note of what happened in that first game is the one goal they did get was a mid or an infield passing play. Those are the type of high-level plays that you need to make in order to get past these type of rosters. You've got to utilize the passing lane. If you can utilize the passing lane, you're going to be able to control the tempo of the game and apply more offensive pressure to your opponent. Not a lot of boost for Duke here. Can they defend the net? Just barely that shot goes off the right post. 
close call for Duke as they continue trying to defend, but look, Nate, no boost for Pig. Barely any, only Jeffrey's got a full engine. Pig gets demoed, Glare controlling the shot, trying to get over the defense, the ball gets cleared, but 50 seconds left, and still the lead holds strong. Duke looking for a shot, barely misses there. A close opportunity, Jeffrey trying to control the ball here. Can he set up the team? Pig gets one! Let's Duke go! Duke is on the board. They've woken up. Let's go. They're back in this one. The Blue Devils <laughs> finally getting a goal on the board. I just want to say, Chief Not Sobers, the only one that's not over 100 points on this scoreboard. Get this man off the field, ECU. He is not assisting the team in any way. But in, in the end of the day here, but how many Duke demos has he gotten? Who, Chief? Yeah, I think he's got at least like five. No, it's not helping. It's not helping. He's got he's got to get points on the board. Demos don't get points. Doesn't matter. <laughs> As Pig gets another touch into the corner here. Blair taking it up. Fake gets it past one. Jeffrey trying to get a quick fake challenge in. Connects with it. Now the Blue Devils are trying to get a little bit of momentum here. Jeffrey trying to get the save. What a beautiful save on the goal line. Now it's Jeffrey off the ceiling. Tries to get a touch. Etchin missing that connection off of the ceiling. Larry keeps no it alive. Way. And they're Ain't trying to no keep it alive. Way. ECU wants the, the last goal. It's cheap. Ain't no way. They're keeping it alive. My eyes, Nate. What am I watching? Somebody ground it. There it is. ECU, unbelievable. Uh, they, they had me for a second there. Seven demolitions for Chief was the final tally, putting in the work. It doesn't show up on the scoreboard, ladies and gents. It doesn't show up there, but he's putting in the work just a little bit. We're going to ready up here and hopefully get going for game number three. ECU sitting on match point. And Nate, for, for a team for ECU starting off the season with a loss it, it, i think it feels pretty good for them to come back strong uh, looking awesome here in week two this match may be a major confidence booster here but at the end of the day you also got to think about that statistically they were expected to win this one now going into this one those were beautiful plays by the blue devils here even coming in with a little bit of outmatched pace and outmatched yep. skill and mechanical presence they did manage to get some goals in and get some pressure going. It's just those minor mistakes that are that ECU is capitalizing on. One thing I definitely want to see the Blue Devils start going into this next one is start incorporating, start incorporating more infield passing plays. Start incorporating bumps and demos into your rotation. And if they can get that going, I think they'll be doing much better this next game. And also, ECU needs the bench chief. I'm starting to see Coach Nate come out a little bit, trying to draw some of the X's and O's as we hop into game number three, ECU on match point. Looking very strong. Duke only two goals for the first two games. Let's see if they can make some magic happen, but it takes less than 15 seconds for basically to get back on the board. Now, that was a great play from ECU there. Chief actually getting some points off of the pass there, sending it to basically able to slot it into the net to connect with that shot here, bringing it to a one-goal lead. Now, ECU for this next one here, it's really coming down to a question of do they want to try and score or do they want the clock to run out? Because we are stat tracking this one, so it's, they could pull a USC and just kind of just fluff up the stats here. The quick shot from Duke, shut down by Glare. And now the Duke Blue Devils coming out hot. Pigs with a quick shot, and they bring in the equalizer. Only th 32 seconds into this game. What is happening here? One shining moment to reach for the stars. Please stop. One shining moment. <laughs> maybe? Kitchen. Just maybe, Nate? Oh, please do. Uh, can, can they copyright my... <laughs> yes, they can. They oh, can. no. Oh, we're screwed. <laughs> it's all over for us. As the pitch is slowly starting to bleed blue here. There's a bump on Jeffrey. Pit, hits it perfectly. No way. It's in no there way. for the shot. Come on. They're woken. The save off the backboard. Don't worry, the Blue Devils. The casters are on your side. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the boost. He's got an upper. Oh, Jeffrey, come on. <laughs> Hit the ball, Jeff. Come on. Let's do it, Jeffrey. Now Jeffrey trying to put that one in the back of the net. Doesn't connect with that pass to Glare. 
Now Glare trying to take it up, collects that big boost here. A ceiling pinch down. Jeffrey with a beautiful save on the goal line. Now basically trying to get some control. Jeffrey saying, not today, I'm gonna do it myself. He gets the demo, etch in there. A scoring opportunity, a 50 off of Glare, but no one there to capitalize as King and Sheep started the rotation back, expecting a loss. Maybe open net, basically trying to get back, flying through the air. He gets the save. Still a 1-1 game. Duke on the offensive end, making a whole lot of opportunities happen. But Nate, can they close this out? Let's see. Achen's been doing pretty solid. Pig Sheep with the only goal. Glare now with the ball, controlling the middle of the field. Jeffrey soaring, looking for a good clear. Pig is there, trying to set up, gets the boost. Another ball going in front of the net. Duke looking for the setup here. They're doing an awesome job, I think, in this one. Nate controlling the boost a little bit better, but it just takes one opportunity. One setup there. Glare's shot just goes a little bit wide. Crazy missed opportunity there. A big demo there. Chief adding to the tally. Now Duke getting a little bit of a second win here. They're able to shut him down. Honestly, it might be the ball chasing strategy that is working for them. It's etching there for the shot. Connects with the 50. Duke has turned on the sleeper jets. They've woken up a little bit. It's a beat over Chief not sober here. Duke might have been just trying to make this interesting, letting ECU <laughs> get up a few games. It's Jeffrey looking for the pass. Demoed out by Chief. I think Chief trying to get a touch here. Doesn't connect with it. Glare going for all Big three save. Duke defenders. The wall, the blue oh. wall. Is they going to get there again? They do. Beautiful three-man save on the goal line. Unbelievable defense coming through from the Duke Blue Devils and still another one. How did that, how did that not go in? Unbelievable off the post. ECU struggling to find the back of the net here in 1-1 one, one is still the score with 100 seconds left. Duke are hanging on in this series. Blair soaring in the wall, comes through and finally finds the net. Now bringing it to a one goal lead here. There's an awkward jump by Pigs there. He wasn't able to connect with it. He had the right idea, but there's a little bit of wiggle wobble, wibble wobble at the top wibble of that wobble. aerial <laughs> wibble wobble. <laughs> kind of made it a little bit awkward for him on that touch, and he wasn't able to connect. As Jeffrey not able to get the double touch. It's just going to float right in, and ECU has found their second win in this game and has decided to bring it to a two goal lead. Jeffrey, my sweet prince, just an awkward touch there off the back wall. Can't quite get back there on the defensive end. And, and right, I mean, Nate, you can't make those mistakes against a squad like ECU. They're instantly able to punish there. And look at Glare, he's starting to feel it. Oh my gosh. What is that, three goals in like 10 seconds here? This is crazy. Now, uh, Glare getting a beautiful flip reset pop up there. Uh, Duke just looked like they weren't ready for that play. They weren't able to get the connection on the save. Jeffrey a little bit awkward in the net. Worked out perfectly in their favor as Glare goes for another pop up. Looking for Chief. Passes it. It's a little bit too awkward for Chief to connect with. Now, Jeffrey, low boost on the corner here, trying to get a play. The pop up off the backboard. Etchin gets the, gets the clear. Now Jeffrey picking up that 100, has a little bit of room to work with, pops it up, basically gets to clear down the field. Now Etchin trying to get his way back right, unable to get the touch in connection with the ground. Chief trying to show me wrong, goes for the flip reset double, get a huge save from Pigs on the goal line. Is Chief is He's so sad. Playing. He's so sad. Unbelievable. Has Chief gotten a goal in this series? I do not think so. I think <laughs> honestly bench this man. <laughs> Trying to prove us wrong, and Pigs absolutely gets the clear of his life. Maybe one? No, we can't even get that one. Oh, God. I, I really hope Chief doesn't take it, too. Uh, we're, we're just having fun here on stream. Uh, 30 seconds left here. Duke, a tough task. Three goals down. Match point, ECU. Looks like they're going to close this out. Chief, though, looking for the pass. He can't get it. 15 seconds, Duke just gonna dribble this one out. They gave us a good show here in game three, but the Pirates take home the bounty and they're gonna get their first win of the season here against Duke. Now it's you going into this next... Oh wait, this series is over, that's right. <laughs> um, now...
ECU now finishing one and one into this one. It's going to be interesting to see how they can take that momentum going into future games. Although week three, they are playing Elon, who I feel like is going to be a pretty decent matchup, but that's got to be a big mm -hmm. confidence booster going into this one. Yeah, for sure. Always, always next week, right? That's one of the big things that I like about the season format is it, I think it really does give the teams over the course of a decent period in hey c3 we don't not only got the fall season we also got the spring season so you get these teams a lot of room to grow and learn and a, a really fun space to do it here in the carolinas so a, a good series here some fun matches here on stream but uh, that's going to do it for our two matches we do have one final segment here on the stream we're going to be talking with one of the victorious pirates here for the post game interview don't click out of that browser we'll be right back with the the match two mvp interview don't click out of that browser we'll be back in just a sec Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for the post game interview. We have a very exciting Chief Not Sober on for the post game interview. I appreciate you joining us for uh, our after match. That is so, I didn't see the stream. Come on, Prod. This is crazy. This Come is crazy. Come on. This is unreal, man. I really did. I saw you were going after the demos, man. You had like oh, yeah. seven in one game. That was crazy. Uh, you know, two dubs for the ECU squad, dominating both Temple and Duke. Chief in week two here of the season. How's the squad feeling? Uh, we're feeling good. We're still pulling each other out. You know, we got a new third pickup. Uh, shout mm -hmm. out Jack. He's that's my boy. He's really good. You know, we've been playing a lot better since we picked him up. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there's still plenty of stuff to work on as a new team, but it's really exciting bringing them on. Mm -hmm, for sure. And getting the first win on the board, what kind of went through y'all's mind adapting from the week one loss into coming through and playing such a strong showing in week two? So, shout out to my Way Tech boys, too. They played a really good series against us when we played them in week mm -hmm. one. Um, yeah, um, so we played a game right before that, and we played like a completely different team with a completely different play style. Yeah. So jumping into their play style where they're really like double committing and jumping on every single ball, it really threw us off. Yeah. And they were kind of playing like almost how we want to play, but without the double commits. Their double <laughs> commits work for them. I'm not trying to call anyone out here, but it works very well for them for whatever reason. But in reality, um, yeah, so that loss, it, we didn't take it too hard because, you know, week one, still figuring the stuff out. And then, yeah, you know, coming sure. in, coming into the Duke game, we really, we looked at their, their ranks, you know, did a little background check. And a little we scouting. were like, yeah, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta. But we, we came in, we were expected to play a, a relatively uh, decent Duke team. Mm -hmm. So we came out swinging at, at the beginning and then we kind of got, I don't want to discredit them at all, but um, we just played faster at the end of the day, Yeah, which is why yeah. I had 98 points four minutes into game two. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of how that game went. And just yeah. had a good time. Yeah, for sure. And looking forward to the, the rest of the season for y'all, you know, it's a bit of an extended regular season, five weeks left. Is there any matches that the squad have maybe picked out as being particularly excited for at all, or anyone you're hoping to play against uh, later um, on in the season? Hoping to play UN UNCW. We didn't get to play them <laughs> last season. We, you know, we have their number in scrims. They got a new team, <laughs> new, new third. Um, I love my boy Christian. Shout out Driptane. Um, but you know, that's a that's those are gonna be some big matchups that are gonna be to play another the two teams that were you know excited to play to kind of really test our um abilities are uncc and usc we have them back-to-back -back weeks i think we played okay. usc first and then uncc yeah. but those are going to be like really testing matches to see you know where we stand in this league absolutely absolutely and, and to kind of go from the the regular season then into land what what sort of impact does that kind of have for you guys in terms of like preparation with how the regular season goes then to kind of transition that into in-person play there uh, potentially looking forward to hey we're looking to compete we're looking to go to wilmington and, and be there at the end of the year you know, what, what does that kind of look like for you guys especially as you know regular seasons starting to figure things out a little bit hopefully and some of those regular season matches go well uh, what are you looking for from the team as you kind of go through the season? Um, I'm really looking for like us to just keep meshing how we are right now. Yeah. Um, we're still trying to figure out play styles with um, having Glare on our team. Okay. You know, he's a really fast player and mm -hmm. not to discredit our old third, but he is much faster. So it's mm -hmm. it's kind of a it's, <laughs> it's a, a really jarring. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird switch going from who we had to who we have now. Yeah. So really going into like you know we're just going to keep playing our games out playing our game mm -hmm. learning what we can do in order to um don't ask about my test today nate um <laughs> don't ask about my test anyways um we won the yeah. games we won the games tonight that's, that's all, all that matters that hey that's all we're matters. cooking <laughs> we're two and all on the night trying to get three we got another game at 10 tonight so Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Well, I appreciate the time, Chief, uh, as well as you answering my questions, man. It, uh, I do get excited for question. these. And Nate does not have a question. <laughs> Go do Nate it. does Real not have a question. What do you so, got, There's Nate? two questions, actually. One. Two questions? Why are you not benched? Um, <laughs> two. How are you feeling about playing USC in week four? Or week four? Oh, it's going to be fun. Um, the last I will time say, I heard is that y'all got reverse swept by them. I didn't even get to play that series. I was at work. We didn't know that. I didn't know that we had cell like cell play-ins that day. So I was at work and I was able to come back in the second match that we played against them. So they got reverse swept in the first series with Odd Trip, and the second series we were down 0-2. I came back. We won the first game. 
that I came back and played, and then we lost the, the last one, but that was it. We only, I only got to play two matches in that. But um, I'm looking forward to playing them. Uh, we got SJT playing six mans with us now, so, you know, he's a cool guy. I like SJT. Um, he's really a uh, good player. Same with Cats and same with Aug, of course. Um, but they're, like I was saying earlier, that's going to be one of the teams that's really going to test us in the yeah. season. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see how we perform against them. Awesome stuff, man. Well, before we let you go, I want to give you a quick moment for any shout outs for the stream that you want to give out. All right. I want to shout out my boy, basically shout out my boy, Jack, big man coach, of course, Nate dog, even though he's been, you know, torching me <laughs> since I've gotten in here. Uh, my better. name finally changed from bench player to chief. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. And roll pirates. <laughs> Sounds uh, good, man. Your name needs to be freak. Not sober now. Freak not sober is crazy. Oh my gosh, too funny. Well, I just want to say thank you to Chief and thank you to everyone for checking out the week two stream. We'll be back next Tuesday with more C3 action as well as another first look pre-show. So thank you to everyone. I look forward to seeing everyone back on the stream next week for week number three. Until next time, hope everyone has a good one and we'll see you soon.